Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Story number one. Humans are exhausting. Written by Trespros. Blinfa had offered to meet his new human co-worker out for drinks after the shift together. Initially, Lympha had doubts on meeting with the new human alone after work. He knew better than most how intense humans could be. He'd been raised off-world, and his early education put him in contact with hundreds of human children whose parents had traveled to the asteroid bases for work. Same as Lympha's own parents. He had always gotten along well enough with the human children, but their volume and breadth of emotion and communication could be exhausting. Every word they spoke was stripping with tonalities, which conveyed complex and subtle double messages and hidden meanings. The positioning of their feet with their hand movements could signal whether you were a friend or a foe. The dozens of muscles in their faces, which tugged at their brow, curled their lips, and allowed for flicks of the eye seemed to exist for the sole purpose of communication. Communicating with one, especially one-to-one, was enough to mentally drain the most observant species as they tried to interpret the literal hundreds of messages a human unconsciously and consciously admitted. But Ellis, his new human co-worker, always seemed a little uh, calmer than other humans, like the tidal wave of emotion was instead a gentle wave. Besides, Lympha had been raised right, and ultimately he had decided to make the first gesture of friendship to his new co-worker, despite how exhausting talking to a human could be. When Lympha eventually asked the human, it was an invitation that was happily accepted by Alice. In fact, Lympha wished that he had asked sooner after seeing the picture-perfect smile on Alice's face as he accepted the offer. Alice's words conveyed no other message than optimism towards their meeting. It was a relief to Lympha, who had expected the complexity that he had learned to always associate with humans. He must have been feeling lonely, Lympha thought to himself, and just so happy that someone reached out. Yet, when Lympha entered the bar after work, he spotted Ellis at the booth by himself. He again was struck by the lack of complexity in Ellis's face and body. He sat firmly in his chair against the wall, his face blank and empty. This wouldn't be unusual for any other species, but struck Lympha as intensely odd. However... Lympha's thoughts quickly disappeared when he took a seat next to his new friend. Ellis's eyes stared at him for a fraction of a second, and after a brief beat, his body, face, and language all exuded happiness. His body relaxed in the chair, and a warm smile stretched over his face. His eyes gained a gentle quality. He greeted Lympha as he sat. Lympha! How are you doing? I'm so glad we're hanging out. Lympha settled into the seat and started to make a small talk with Ellis. They talked about their workload, the defeat of the local basketball team, man, with the humans great at coming up with games, and the attractive human who worked in the office between theirs. At each conversation topic, Lympha was struck by the single tone of the communication the human expressed. Frustration at work, sadness at the team's defeat, lust towards the co-worker. From past experience, Lympha knew this was odd. He expected frustration towards their workload, yes but also a hint of hope in his eyes towards the rays that was coming up, and also fear in his body language that his work wasn't good enough. Most non-humans wouldn't pick up on this, but Lympha had a lifetime experience with humans. Finally, the small talk turned to the plans for the weekend. After Lympha told Ellis all about his plans to visit family, it was Ellis's turn to share. Uh, A funeral. A close friend from Earth died recently. Lympha was shocked by how Ellis delivered this news. His eyes became downturned and he shrank back in his chair. He spoke each word quietly with a downward tonality. He depicted the definition of grief. Lympha remembered when the dog of a human friend he knew as a child died. Of course, the human exuded grief towards the dog, but a million other emotions as well. Hate and anger towards the injustice of it. Depression at self-loathing towards not spending more time with their pet while it was alive, and even the tiniest traces of happiness towards all of the attention that they were receiving at school over the tragedy. It was entirely overwhelming, of course. Lympha 
had to excuse himself after 20 seconds of watching the child and all of her classmates after the news came out. But it was entirely different with Ellis just now. Ellis said all of the things they might expect someone to say. He looked like a grief-struck man, but he just didn't seem right. He just didn't seem human. At least, not how Lympha thought of human. He prodded Ellis for more. Forgive me if I'm overstepping my bounds, but uh, how did your friend die? Ellis raised his eyes from the ground and stared at Lympha for another quarter of a second, his face loosening somewhat during the process. After the quarter of a second passed, the look of grief came over him once more as he responded. Murdered, shot as he was walking back to his car after a night out and left in an alley uh, to bleed to death. Lympha gasped at this news. He was so surprised by this news, he forgot all about his observations. Besides, how dare he judge how a friend grieved a traumatic death? I'm so sorry. I have no idea how someone could do something like that, he said in an attempt to console his friend. Ellis shrugged his shoulders. Yeah, well, some people are just psychopaths. Nympha had never heard of this word before. A psychopath? What's that? You don't have a word for psychopath. Ellis looked to auto-translate off and then again again for good measure. Guess you don't, he said when Lympha still didn't understand the word. Some humans are psychopaths. They're people born without the capacity for emotion. They've got no ingrained morality, like most normal people do. Instead, they usually live their lives with whatever internal logic they develop towards their own self-interest. About 2% of all people are one. Sentient and intelligent life without morality. Lympha was shocked at this news, and he pressed Ellis for more information on the subject. You're telling me that one out of fifty people are murderers, just animals operating on instinct? Ellis calmly shook his head. No, they're not animals, and hardly any of them are murderers. Most live completely normal lives like any other person. It's hard to spot them, too, because they usually do such a good job at faking the emotions that people expect from them. Sometimes they can be a bit manipulative because of their skill of faking emotions, but like I said, hardly any commit serious crime. Nympha thought back to his childhood. You know, I grew up in a human-majority region. I went to school with hundreds of your species. If 2% of them were psychopaths, then surely I must have encountered some, right? Ellis ignored the question and asked one of his own. You grew up around people. You're used to how we talk. Lympha nodded his head. Oh yes, I'm well aware of humans communicate. I could hardly spend 20 minutes alone with one of you when I made my first human friend. I've gotten used to your species scale of emotions and behavior now though. Why? I didn't feel overwhelmed at all during our early conversation. Not even when you mentioned your friend. Lympha knew that it was a mistake as soon as he said it. Instantly, the human's body transformed as the mention of his dead friend. He looked grief-stricken as before but other emotions too, anger, depression, uncertainty, and fear washed over his body. When he spoke, he spoke with a dozen intonations, each carrying a subtle clue as to what the human was feeling. Right. My friend who died, Addis said to himself, Hey, how about I go get us some drinks? Lympha shot up out of his chair before Ellis got a chance to rise, eager to right his crass mistake. Of course not. Drinks are on me tonight, the whole night. Are you sure? Ellis responded. Lympha happily reassured his friend, Of course, I'd be happy to. The human's smile and a complex wave of gratitude, hope, and mellow sadness washed over Lympha as he started to turn away to walk over to the bar. No soon as he turned his body, Ellis's body turned blank again. God, Ellis thought to himself, this is going to be an exhausting night. End of story. Story number two. No one will buy human weapons anymore. Written by Damaged Dice DM. It's rare for opposing factions to agree to many terms at the onset of a conflict. But more and more warring species are agreeing to not purchase human weaponry for their conflicts. Several studies have shown that any conflict where human weapons are involved, the casualty rate is 600% higher than the average for conflicts where they are absent. This number is of course skewed by the fact that those conflicts were mostly species going against humans early in their history of space exploration before they knew better. 
There are many reasons for this. The main one being that weapons designed to kill a human, one of the most hearty beings in the universe, are almost without exception excessive to kill almost anything outside of the same megafauna on Death World Class 7 and above. The other reason being that the humans seem to have an unlimited supply of them and could supply 100% of the population of an entire system completely from current stock at a moment's notice, with no additional reduction. This also meant that if one of the sides was to break this rule, the other side could have their own human weapons within a day. Ironically, this also extended to human shielding as it had evolved alongside human weapons. It made almost all non-human weapons utterly useless and would lead to long drawn out combats with almost no casualties or damage and basically make it impossible to win or lose a war. No one was crazy enough to attack humans, so war became a very frustrating endeavor. This is, ironically, how the humans brought peace to the galaxy. When one side would start to lose, they would buy human weapons and shields, and the other side would do the same, and they would end in a stalemate every time, to the point that they just stopped waging war at all. As the humans say, an armed society is a polite society. End of story. I just quickly want to thank the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia Barkey, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gusta, Arcadian, Lord Azrakal, and Joe Kambaka. 